Welcome back everybody, my name is Gecko Lacal, and this is Man Bites Retro. And what we do here, every week there's a new voice that brings forward their favorite person in film history, and we present that voice to you, so please stay tuned for the show. As we go further into, into uh, Black History Month, I wanted to bring up one of the biggest aspects of of Black History Month that I think is underappreciated and kind of goes under the radar. And I think it's comedy. This, of course, I'm talking about Def Jam comedy. This is probably one of the most poignant comedy shows ever. It's all Def Comedy was probably from 92 to 97 one of the most influential comedy shows ever put on on uh, TV. It ran on HBO and from 92 to 97 it pretty much had the biggest cast of everybody and anybody that does stand up and TV sitcom comedy nowadays that's African American and you're talking about the likes of Martin Lawrence that spinned off and did Martin which was a phenomenal show Kid Capri, which is another phenomenal um, comedian. Adele Givens. Also, Bill uh, Bellamy, which he's phenomenal. Bernie Mac, which he's not only had his own show, but has had uh, success in films and all that stuff. Uh, Dave Chappelle, which in, in my personal opinion is one of the best black comedians out there right now. Then Chris Tucker, which he's been in TV shows, movies with Rush Hour, Fifth Element, all all those different ones. Cedric the Entertainer, another one that's not only been on great stand-up, but has been on shows, movies, everything. Steve Harvey, which he he's he's basically the the most imitated and most um retweeted and re <laughs> whatever Instagrammed and all that stuff character in the internet right now Eddie Griffin which he is probably one of my favorite uh, comedians on this with Dave Chappelle as well Uh, Tracy Morgan which is another phenomenal story in himself the fact that he was able to recover from all this craziness this accident that happened to him and still come out on top and still be able to bring this comedy to 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 the world it's phenomenal Jamie Foxx which he not only became an actor, but Academy Award winning actor on top of all that. He started off on this. Chris Rock, which, I mean, Dogma, come on. That's it. That's all you got to say, Dogma. And everything else he's done, which is phenomenal too. Uh, Kevin Hart, which his film career is ridiculous. Um, Leslie Jones is another one. Cat Williams. Cat Williams is like the Snoop Dogg of comedy. This man just he he he's hilarious. He's awesome. He just spot on. Monique, which this is this is an older comedian, and she just oh my god, she spawned out of Martin as well, and basically they, she got her own show for a little bit too, and that was phenomenal stuff. Craig Robinson, he he's become an icon in movies and just kind of like the 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 African American dad joke person. He he's awesome. But all these comedians started off on this stand-up comedy show in the mid '90s, and it just spawned this kind of new interest because comedy, you know, clubs and all that stuff have always been around. Every part of society has had comedy clubs. And it was always about, like, the Steve Martins and all that stuff before. This changed the game. It gave it to everybody. It kind of started this inclusion of African American society into into the mainstream. And this was right on the cusp of... Oh, uh, what do you call it? The 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 rap movement. It it was right after the the Biggie Smalls and Tupac debacle, and it was at the pinnacle of of the rap movement and everything. And this kind of changed the game drastically because it 
it shifted the talk into this very aggressive, very violent aspect, and it gave a voice to those people that were suffering from that violence, but it turned it on its head and kind of gave this this emotion, but diffusing of emotions as well. And there's actually a whole series that was done on Netflix. It's for the 25th anniversary of Def Jam's. And that is just, it, it's so interesting, all the celebrities that they bring on. it I mean, literally everybody, all the majors come out here, at least for a little bit, and talk about the influence of Def Jam and, and what it did to their lives, their livelihoods, and how many lives it changed. Just with these celebrities alone, all these names came out of this. I mean, this is literally the SNL of, of African American uh, culture, it it brought out so many amazing people, and the influences that they've had on society. It's brought kind of kind of this inclusion to society. White middle class Americans didn't know African culture, didn't know African history, and had no idea. And then shows like Martin that they, yeah, there are comedies and they were all kind of like these tropey sitcom shows and all that, but they had deeper meanings. They had moments where they went dark. They they brought up conversations about about you know st- the modern times and all that stuff, and and it was it got dark on some of those episodes. Some of those episodes of Martin tackled a lot of dark issues and just in in uh what do you call it a uh, rush hour this kind of silly cop buddy cop movie between two minorities yeah it sounds kind of stupid and sound sounds kind of like tropey and all that stuff now but if you think about it back when this movie first came out you're talking about a chinese guy uh jackie chang and and Chris Tucker just coming together and doing this weird buddy cop thing. And what came out of it was just kind of this like, oh yeah, that's, that's amazing. And you look past any type of racial bias that you might have when you go into, into the theater and you watch something like this and you see this, this culture that's so similar to your own. And for the first time, for a lot of people, I mean, I grew up in Miami, so it was kind of a melting pot, and we had a little bit of everybody, so it was it was not as impactful, but since I've moved out of Miami and all that, I've seen the impact that these movies and shows and all these things, like, I had I have people that legit have told me that they never saw a black person until they saw them in comedy shows on on uh on on tv and i'm like you're you say what how is that even possible but there's points there's places in america where there's not and that that's just sad and it's it's such a fascinating culture and such a fascinating uh, aspect of of our society that needs to be brought out more and i love that these these voices were brought out because of this one tv show that was not meant to be taken serious it was comedy comedy back then was just very fun slapsticky and just whatever but these got into real issues got into modern issues got into into points that they were trying to bring up like they're talking about the violence, the police violence that that rap music had been touching on for the last four or five years before these this show started, and they were bringing it out. They were talking about it. They were bringing these issues to the forefront and making light of it, but also giving a voice to these people that otherwise people would not have looked at. Because let's be real. If you're not exposed to that that culture, then you're not going to listen to rap. But comedy, comedy is one of those things that kind of 
surpasses the the marginalization and and lines that that we encounter on a daily basis and Def Jam was probably one of those that blurred the line for a lot of people and kind of crossed over and gave people an idea of another culture that they never knew and that's what TV and and movies and shows and all that stuff that's what it's about the arts are all about that it's all inclusion and just kind of bringing out everybody's difference and different cultures and different aspects of life because let me tell you when I was a kid and I watched the fifth element I watched all these movies rush hour and Martin especially Martin that that show for me holds a special place and it, it really does different strokes um Fresh Prince of Bel Air, all these shows were were kind of like milestones for me because it showed me a culture that yeah, I knew a little bit of, but I didn't know much of. And these shows they brought those things to the forefront. They brought those cultures to the forefront that we weren't used to. And they changed they really changed the dynamic in, in society because it kind of become more acceptable. It gives the the more exposure something gets, the less likely people are to to shun it or turn it away. And that's why I think representation is one of the most important things in our society nowadays in every aspect. And yes, it could be taken to an extreme like they did in the 70s and and 80s with black exploitation films. But then you get that course correction that happened in the 90s as a result of it and you see these these amazing movies that come out that we've been talking about this month and TV shows like this one in particular and i think that's where you see the culmination of all those years it goes through these events that that are just part of our our way of coping with these changes in society and these paradigm shifts as i like to say and you know, I, I honestly think that because of this, we've become a better culture. We've become a better society. And I really wanted to pay homage to this particular TV show and movie in general. Because, first of all, it changed the face of what we know for comedy. And TV shows like Dave Chappelle are another thing that really stand out to me. And I think it's fascinating that show, if you watch it, comes off like kind of the stoner comedy and, you know, whatever comedy. But it's really not. This comedy is deep. This comedy is very centered in, in intellectual dialogue between people. And a lot of the skits are very poignant. And you're like, whoa, this guy, did just did he go there? He just went there. And... I think that's interesting because it gives voices to people that they they kind of laugh off and that's amazing that these these comedians yeah they're they're funny and all that but it wasn't just about comedy it was about getting a message across and trying to 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 make people see these ideals and these societal changes that they want to be seen doing. And I think that's where we're getting now that we're seeing this this shift in our society. Where everything is becoming more and more acceptable as we go. And we become a society of, of acceptance rather than, than, you know, just this hatred, this blind hatred towards somebody that has nothing has never done anything to you or never done anything against you why would you do such a thing and that's why it's so important to highlight black history month because until recently until the last 70 80 years african americans had no representation here in the united states and that's a horrible thing that's horrible for our society any modern society to do so even, even uh, what do you call it? Uh, cultures like ours that that took time to to evolve and and kind of allow this acceptance and still evolving because let me tell you, 
some of the current events that are going on are are just saddening how bad things in our society are going and I think these issues need to be talked these conversations need to be had because the more representation the more impact that we have on people's lives I think the more likely change will occur so uh, thank you guys for staying on this uh, short episode of Man Bites Retro but reviewing Def Jam 25th anniversary that's currently streaming on Netflix it's a Netflix original and if you haven't seen a lot of the stand up comedy on Netflix there's a lot on there just type in the name of one of the comedians on this uh, list and you'll find so many stand up comedy shows on there Um, so yeah definitely check those out because they're pretty phenomenal this movie is, it definitely hold this documentary holds a special place in my heart because I loved Def Jam comedy and that was one of those things that I used to love. I, we had a hacked box that, that used to be able to watch HBO back in the day and we I used to watch that in the middle of the night and like, yes, oh my god, this is awesome, so awesome. So, um, thank you guys for staying tuned, and we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Man Bites Retro.